Well, if I live to be a hundred, I'll never be able to forget the first time I read Augustine. Yep, there was a big snowstorm that blanketed Geneva. There was nothing for us to do but snuggle up next to the fire, sip our hot chocolate, and read a good book. You might not believe it, but we almost missed Christmas that year. Oh, excuse me, you can call me John. What's the matter? Haven't you ever encountered a French theologian in the woods at night before? Nice around here, isn't it? Geneva is a great town to live in, provided you agree with me. Here, right in the middle of the Christmas tree forest. Yep, here's where we grow them. Lots and lots of green wood. Speaking of which, I must be leaving. I don't want to miss the heretic burning. It just wouldn't be Christmas without one. Au revoir. Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy just for you, David. This has nothing to do with your two friends back there. Wait, for real? How does that make sense? For unto you and the other elect is born this day, again, just for you and the other elect, He's just rubbing it not in. for Bill and Greg back there. He called us by name. That's cold. Why am I such a misfit? Why did God make me a nitwit? You won't regenerate me, I quit, since I don't fit in. Herbie, a reprobate, wanting God to save them. What is this world coming to? Get back to sinning. That's your problem, Jessica. You were created spiritually dead. It's like God created you with a heart made of ice, and only he can thaw it out and give you new life. There's nothing you can do. You can't even believe. You need God to regenerate you and give you the gift of faith. Well, my eyes are beginning to open for the very first time to what life is really all about. Oh no! Jacob Arminius is plotting a trap for John Calvin. I shall get him when he returns. He's got to cross my mountain on the way home. <laughs> Will John survive? Calvin is Santa. How many boys and girls made the good list this year? Calvin is Santa. Calvin is Santa. Oh, oh, oh dear. Ebenezer Scrooge? Yes. Are you the spirit whose coming was foretold to me? There's only one ghost for you, I'm afraid. No point sending three. You see, you were ordained to reprobation in eternity past. I'm just here to rub it in. The first rays of Christmas morning shine down upon the orphanage, where God sovereignly ordained the perfect number of children lose their parents and live lives of poverty and sickness for his glory and good pleasure.
While these depraved vipers in diapers appear to celebrate Christmas morning, we can rest assured they were created unable to understand the true meaning of Christmas. Behold the greed and selfishness of these depraved little ones, thinking they somehow earned and merited their gifts by choosing to receive them. Only by being irresistibly regenerated by prevenient effectual grace will they understand it was God who gave and God who received. And God who withheld such grace from their brothers and sisters. Indeed, the true meaning of Christmas is that from all eternity, God freely and unchangeably ordained that most of these children be created unable to rightly understand spiritual things, that they be created under his wrath and doomed from the womb to eternal torment. Will they give thanks to God and praise him for his common grace? Of course not. So they are justly condemned, just as God perfectly decreed. Contrary to the claims and entailments of Calvinism, God does not want anyone to perish. He did not decree and damn anyone in eternity past. Rather, he is patient and long-suffering, lovingly calling us to return to him. In fact, he loved the world and sent his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Jesus' mission was a display of God's love and desire for redemption, restoration, and healing. Merry Christmas.